Hello everyone, it's Benny, and welcome back to the audio programming tutorial series. Today, we're going to be implementing the iAudio Context interface with SDL Audio. And as before, I went ahead and created a basic header file for it off screen. It doesn't have anything special, it just has really all the stuff that was in iAudio Context. But I did do one thing special. I put it in its own folder for SDL. And this way, we're just going to sort of keep separate all the SDL specific stuff from all the rest of the things. And that way, we just keep things separated like that. And that's nice for things like, say, if we need a new, to use OpenAL for something, all the code that's SDL specific can easily be isolated and removed because it's all in the SDL folder. So that's kind of nice. But, anyways, let's go ahead and let's implement this. Now, of course, we need a constructor. I'm not going to do anything special with it yet, but we're going to need it. We have a virtual destructor, which will imply a few things that I'll talk about in a moment. We have all the f functions from the, ver from the I audio context, like I mentioned earlier. Now, here I'm going to, to go ahead and include sdl2 slash sdl.h. So that way we have access to SDL stuff. Because I'm going to have a function, void generate samples. And this is sort of going to be, depending on how you look at it, either the lowest level or highest level version of this function. This is going to be the one that's directly called by SDL's sort of callback system. So it's going to take a uint 8 pointer for the stream and an int for the, I guess called, yeah, stream length for stream length. There. And that's really all we need here. We will need a few private things, though. First of all, we need SDL audio device ID, call M device. And this is the audio device that we're going to be, well, playing audio with. And of course, one context corresponds to one device. We're playing, pausing, or stopping audio from that particular audio device, whether it be speakers, headphones, whatever. And, not, and that's as opposed to playing, pausing, stopping audio through every audio device connected to your computer at once, which would just be chaos. So that's why we're doing that. I'm also going to go ahead and include vector. And the reason I'm going to include that is because I'm going to have an SDL vector of floats for our internal stream. This is the one that we're generating samples from the audio objects into. And the reason I'm making this a vector as opposed to an array is because, well, at this point we don't know how much or how big this stream should be. We don't even know if we need just 20 samples, 100 samples, 10,000 samples, whatever. So that way we can resize it as necessary with relative ease. I'm also going to have one more vector, std vector of audio object pointer that I'm going to call just m playing audio. So this is just a list of all the audio that's currently being played. And one more thing, I'm going to have a void. I'll actually make a boolean, why not? Void remove audio, which takes in some audio object reference AO. And this is, of course, going to remove audio from this playing audio list. The reason I'm making it a private function is because, well, a vector, not the ideal data structure for arbitrary insertion and removal. It's easy to get things started, but it's not ideal, and we'll talk more about that later. But also, remember, the, generates, the sample generation is happening, it's being called from a separate thread, so we're going to need some thread synchronization, and that can help us out with that. Other than that, really, I'm just going to have a basic copy and yeah, basic copy constructor and assignment operator that doesn't do anything and, pri and is private, and that's just so they don't accidentally call them and cause memory issues because of the rule of three and whatnot. But yeah, other than that, that's all we're going to need in the header file. So I'll be back once I've set things up off screen. Okay, I went ahead and set up that null copy constructor and assignment operator. Looks just like that. And I went ahead and wrote out the skeleton for 
all the methods in our SDL audio context, just to save a bit of video time. And there's also this method, SDL audio context underscore audio callback. Now this is just the callback function that will be used by the audio device. It's exactly like the my audio callback in main. Except, well, this is designed to use SDL audio context. So, I've cast user data to an SDL audio context pointer because, of course, that's how we're going to use it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to set a context generate samples stream in length. That's all this is going to do. It's just going to, well, call it the context generate samples function. Now let's set up a constructor. We're going to need an audio spec. We're going to need to zero the spec just so there's nothing in it at first. And now we're going to hard code some stuff. Later on, we're going to make this a little more general, but for now, I'm just going to hard code values to make our lives a little bit easier. So, I'm going to set the frequency, just going to hard code that at 44,100. In fact, just to make sure I do this later, I'm going to leave a little to do here. To do, don't hard code the, these values. I'll put an exclamation point to make it that much more sincere. And let's set the format to audio s16 sys. This means that each sample will be assigned 16-bit number, and it'll be either Little Indian or Big Indian, depending on whatever's more natural to our computer system. But don't worry, we shouldn't have to really worry about that too much. So, we got that. Spec.channels, we're going to set that to 2, so we're working with stereo audio, 2 channels. And what else is it? Spec, whoops, spec.samples. I'm just going to pick a value, 24, er, no, 20,000, <laughs> take a nap, 2048. There we go. That's just, again, picking something. And that's really all we need to set up. Other than that, we need the callback equals, well, this. And spec.userData equals this. So there, that is the SDL audio context, or the spec for it anyways. Now from there, we're going to need to do pretty much the same thing we did here in main. So I'm just going to copy and paste. In fact, I'm going to copy all of this and paste. So, yeah, we're going to move that in here. We're going to open an audio device with our spec. And you can keep this on allow any change if you want. In fact, yeah, I'm going to do that, but that's that may cause some... You know, no, I'm not going to do it, because this way we'll have an explicit error if it goes wrong. So, to do handle differing different specs. Sure. Otherwise, here I'm just going to... Yeah, I'm still going to need... I'm still going to throw an exception or something later on, but for now I'm just going to print out an error and here, I'll just throw SDL get error. <laughs> there. <laughs> it's something. Well, I'll have a special exception class and everything later on, but this is just something to get us started. And, yeah, we're just going to start playing the audio, because now everything's set up. And, of course, in the destructor, when we're done, we're going to close audio device, M device. Oh. And I almost forgot that this should be M device equals this, not just any device. So there, that's important. And there, that's that should be all we need to do in the constructor and destructor. So, now let's implement the remove audio function. So we're going to create an SDL vector of audio object pointer colon colon iterator call it, and that just equals m playing audio dot begin. So we're going to be going through the list with iterators. We'll create another iterator for the end, which is, of course, in playing audio dot end. And we're going to do a for loop. For it is not equal to end and plus plus it. So we're going through the whole list. And the way this works is really simple. If, and now we do have to be a little careful here because we're comparing audio object pointers to audio object references. 
or iterators to audio object pointers, excuse me. So I'm going to say value of it, this will give me an audio object pointer, if this is equal to, and the address of AO will give me a pointer to this audio object. So if this is the same, then I can say mplayingaudio.arrayIt, and I can return true. Otherwise, if we go through the whole list and can't find it, I'm going to return false. Very simple, very primitive remove audio function. Like I said, the vector, not the ideal data structure for this. Later on, we're going to, you know, have some better data structures set up and whatnot, but for now, this is just this is something that works. Now, to play audio, first off, we're going to lock audio device, M device. At the end, we're going to SDL unlock audio device, M device. And this is just a mutex lock on the device. What it does is it prevents the device from calling generate samples between these two calls. And this is important, because this means that no other thread will be accessing the playing audio vector, or the audio stream buff vector, or anything else in this, in this you know, whole class. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to remove AO from the list. And the reason I'm going to do this is so that we aren't accidentally playing the same sound twice, because that just, well, that'll cause problems. And then after that, I'm just going to say I'm playing audio dot push back address of AO. So there, simple as that. That's all I'm going to do. So I'm just going to have a little note here that say this prevents duplicates. Because if there are any duplicates, it would remove them first before re-adding them. Now pause audio is going to be very similar. Only difference is it just directly removes it. And stop audio, again, also very similar. The big difference here is we're going to do an if check here. If we remove the audio successfully, then what we're going to do is we're going to say AO.setPass to 0.0. .0. So that way, it just goes back to the beginning. And that's really everything. All we need to implement now is the generate samples function, and we're good. So, the first thing I'm going to do in generate samples is rename stream to stream in, stream len to stream in len, and I'm going to create a size t variable for the actual stream len. That's just going to be stream in len divided by 2. Cast to, of course, size t. And the reason I'm doing this is because stream n is a bunch of bytes. Stream n len is the number of bytes. But I don't want the number of bytes, I want the number of samples. And in our hard-coded system, we have two bytes per sample. So do the math. You have the number of bytes divided by, by two. That's the number of, well, pairs of bytes, which is the number of samples. So there, we have the stream len. So, now I'm going to take our own stream, the stream of floats, and I'm going to reserve. I'm going to reserve at least enough for stream len, because that's important. I'm going to create a float pointer to it that I'm going to call float stream. That's the, val at the value of float double pointer. I know, getting of address of m stream. Yeah, I know getting the a pointer to the data of a vector is a little bit weird. You have to take the address of it, cast it to a double pointer of the data you want, and then dereference it, but hey, it works, so, you know, yeah. So now I'm going to do a for loop. For size ti, 0, i is less than stream len, i++. plus plus. I'm just going to set float stream sub i equal to 0. So we're going to start with nothing. This way, if no sound is playing, then we don't hear anything. Simple as that. Otherwise, or well, after that, rather, we're going to go through all the objects, just like I did in Remove Audio. But we're not going to remove them. What we're going to do is we're, we are still going to do sort of an if check here. What, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do address of IT, or, oh yeah, and I'm going to do arrow generate samples. We're going to go into the float stream with the stream length. And if this fails, if not this, 
then I'm going to remove audio IT. Well, okay. Remove audio value of IT and the value of that because it's an audio reference. I know the syntax a little weird, but it gets the job done. So yeah, we're going to generate the samples from everything. If whatever we just generated samples from has finished playing, has no more samples to generate, we're going to remove it because we're not going to need to play it anymore. And there. So now we have, we should have at this point, what our audio, sh we should have our final set of audio in the float stream. So now I'm going to do one final for loop. It's going to be just like this. And actually, I'm going to make it cast to sint 16 pointer stream, which equals, of course, sint 16 pointer stream n. There. So this way we are talking about it in terms of samples rather than bytes, which makes things just that much nicer. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to have float val equals float stream sub i. So we're going to get whatever the value is. Now, if the value is out of range, we want to keep this in range. So if this is greater than 1.0f, then val will equal 1.0f. Otherwise, there, if val is less than negative 1.0f, that's another way it could be out of range. So then val would equal negative 1.0f. So in audio lingo, we're limiting it. We're limiting the audio samples to, well, the range 1 to negative 1. And at the end of all this, I'm just going to say stream sub i equals val times 32,767, which is the max value of, well, assigned 16-bit integer, cast to sint 16. And that should be all we need to do here. We should have samples being generated, we should be able to build, everything should work, and we're good to go. But we still haven't really implemented audio data. How do we implement that? Will this really just work with whatever audio data we throw at it? Find out next time on the Audio Programming Tutorial Series. Hope you enjoyed, hope you learned, and I'll see you next time.